All right, Scott, I am past excited to be sitting down with you and talking about what I'm going to refer to at first as uh -huh. a green home or green living. But then after meeting you for the first time, you brought up the word sustainable living or sustainable home. Share with the viewers kind of like the difference between the two, because you hear more people talking about green and not as many people talking about sustainable. Yeah, to me, you know, to, the green is... By the way, I think it's a very loving word because it's whatever you want it to be for a lot of people. But I think the essence of what is green, you know, when we think of it as a society, it's if you really go back to the roots of it, it really meant something that was the color of grass. Like, and that's so it's everything that's supposed to be natural. So if I were to categorize here, even though I didn't come up with the term, I would say green has to do with making your house more natural, you know, making it more livable, making it more breathable. You know, I, I think we as a society, as a, as a being, we were meant to live outside. <laughs> we were meant to live in the green. And once you put people inside a house and you, you make them so airtight nowadays and um, lock it in and you think you're doing a good job because you've got everything sealed and you've got all this off-gassing happening because you're not using materials that are natural or green, that's where the problems come. So, and then to contrast that, I would say sustainable is, well, maybe it should be we're sustaining ourselves, right? Right. But I would say sustainable has to do more with, with it, the idea of that you are sustaining yourself in your like little plot of land. You know, for example, we did a house for Ed Begley, and we tried to make it so everything he did was sustainable. There, um, you're able to catch the sun, you're able to catch the rain. We couldn't afford to catch the wind for him, but you can sustain yourself on that little plot of land. Right, and so like the example that you gave. When you say like you know catch the rain, right? Like, like explain that because when people hear that like in a, in a uh, like a snapshot, they don't they may not really get what you're saying. I see, I see, yeah. So um, on what we did for Ed and what other people can do, there's simple ways to do it. Is is we put for Ed this enormous ten thousand gallon red um, rainwater tank that we buried. It's the size of a pool. You could probably have Ed and his family live down there if you wanted. And so what we did is it's really simple. You go on the roof, you go into the backyard, you go to the front yard, and we just take all of the drains. And if you've ever seen in the front of a house where you got that little hole that comes out of the curb mm -hmm. and the water just gushes out and goes down your street to the neighbor's house into the storm water, well, why not collect it, right? So instead of routing that to hole in your curb, we're able to route that to a tank. And so what happens is in two one-inch rainfalls, we can catch 10,000 gallons of water, which is it's a decent amount of water, right? Right. And then from there, we can then pump it out as needed, you know, after the rain. So anytime during the year, then you can pump out that water. Um, less expensive ways that you could do it, because not everybody has the ability to bury something like that in their backyard. You can also uh, do the simplest of things, which is just taking from your rain, your, um, you take the rainwater through using the downspouts, and you can have a hose and just put it into a rain catch, to little barrels, and they make them for you. They're in... Some cities now are even donating them for free, so you can get up to 30 to 50 gallons. Wow, and so then you can use that rainwater yeah. that you've caught right. for watering, the, I guess, the grass. Exactly, and here's the easiest way to do it. All you have to do is you just go ahead and just plug a, pop a little hole. Most of them come with it. You can put a little hose bib on there, right? It's just a little valve that turns it on and off, and you got a hose, and turn the thing on, and I can water my garden or wash the car, and it's guilt-free. It's right. rainwater. And, um, and the coolest thing about rainwater that people don't really know about, I don't know if you ever noticed, but you never notice after a rain, it's somehow everything's just greener than it's ever been yes. before, right? Like you could be watering your yard, you know, all year long, your grass, and it's just always kind of wilty yellow. One rain, boom, it's beautiful. What happened? Well, the difference is, is that the rainwater is not filled with the chlorine and all of these chemicals that are being put into your water supply. So... If you really want to have one of the most amazing gardens and yards ever, you actually use the rainwater to do it. Hmm. Well, I mean, you see it right now in California, right? right? It's like it's gorgeous. It right. looks like we're in Maui or something. Exactly. But try doing that artificially it never looks the same. So not only rainwater is it saving the, you know, the ability for you not have to use the municipal water supply, but you don't have to pump all of that chemical stuff into your yard either. Right. So, so that would be sustainable living that's that i would call sustainable because i'm able to sustain myself off my little plot of land i don't have to go to my neighbor i don't have to have some big conduit i don't have to connect to people i can just live off my land well okay so with sustainable living many people who don't have resources so let's say people 
that fall into the category of wealth, the ones who don't have right. that kind of money, they dis they, they it seems like they're disconnected with sustainable and green. Like it feels like it doesn't really pertain to me. I live in an apartment. Right. Everybody's talking about being green and sustainable. I mean, I get it for Egg Bagley. This guy's you know made right, movies, yeah. got He's money. A Uber guy. He's a so, but you're saying this is something that pertains to everybody. Yeah, it does. I mean, it's it it it. It's something that people lose sight of. It doesn't, you're right. I'm glad you brought that up. Just because you live in an apartment or have a condominium or have a neighbor doesn't mean that you can't live that way. And I think, you know, if you, there's an opposition to some people have uh, to the word green. You know, I think for every one person you're, that likes it, someone's going to say, I don't need it. Because I think it's been violated by people in the wrong way. It's not a bad movement. So, but if you tell people that they have the ability to live healthier, if you tell people, they no longer have to have asthma. You know, if you tell people that they can actually live a longer life inside these structures and you give them some of the simplest tips, like why, why not do it? You know, it's, if you recognize that we spend about 89% of our life inside a structure and we really weren't meant to be, you know, whether it be work, whether it's home, and then you get in a car. You know, right. How often do you ever actually go outside anymore? And you're sitting inside these structures that are just not built naturally and they're having an effect on the human body you know and we don't recognize it now because you have the drug companies are able to give you a prescription for anything that seems to go wrong and you just think it's being masked and we think that we're somehow more technologically advanced because our home's got a little app and i can touch a button but we're not getting healthier we're going the other way right yeah you, you definitely see that yeah. so whether you live in an apartment whether you live in a house this big or small Sustainable living is something that yeah we all have options for, and it's living off yeah it's living health you know in a healthy way off of your own land, right? Um, I, my my sister's um, husband built this some beautiful log cabin. It was like the most amazing thing. I mean, it's two stories. They took the the lumber from the land. They've got a stream there, so they can actually fish off their own stream. They've got geothermal heating and cooling, so they're basically just. I mean, they're really living off of the land. It's just. It's amazing. Wow. So, okay. Now, people at home, they're not privy to right. being able to spend a whole bunch of time with you, right? And I've had a chance to spend a good amount of time, and just even before taping, I learned things. What are tips you can provide? Things that everyday mm -hmm. people can actually do to, one, save money, maybe on electric or something, that would help them from, I guess, be closer to green or sustainable living. So the, the and again, I feel weird because I'm using both words. Like, should I be using one word, like green or sustainable? How about just better building techniques or just moving to the future? I mean, you know, I, okay. <laughs> just being smarter. I mean, somebody said, are you the green builder? And I said, you know, there's actually there's a few other colors in that prism that we should be looking at. So I think let's take it to the next level. Let's add a few more colors into this thing. Right. Um, but to answer your question, how does other people do it? Um, there are simple things that people can do, and it's, to me it's called conservation. I'm going to add a third term to your, you know. Okay, green, green sustainable. Sustainable, conservation. And I, you know, look, if you're really being conservative, you kind of already encompass the, gr the green and sustainable because you have to, you're conserving. And I think that's what Ed, you know, taught me very well. I think he was taught it by his father who was in the Depression era, but it works well because here's what I see people doing. I see them thinking that somehow they're green. So they go out and they buy all these things that have like a little green label on them, you know, and they put 79 uh, LED light fixtures up in their room and they think somehow they did the green thing and then they start decorating the backyard with, you know, LED fixtures and green and, and they want to take everything out of the house and recycle and put green rugs down. You're doing the opposite. I mean, to take all of that stuff and it's like, you know, when I go to the store, I, I look up at the shelf, it says made in China, shipped in China. I mean, come on, there's right. nothing green about that. And so the idea of actually using less of something is the most natural thing you're going to do. I mean, having all these things that are man-made sitting inside your structure, the more open that you make your structure, the more breathable, the less it's there, the more you start to return back to nature, and the more you start to turn back to like what I really believe is green is, you know, being one with nature. Right. Well, you made a, you made a point that opened up my eyes and, and I want to bring it up because okay. I believe it will help many people. And that is, you said that, a woman came to you or a client of yours and she says, I want to be green. I want to get closer mm. to green. And, and uh, so what can I do in my kitchen? 
what what can I do to like make a difference? Right? Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so share share that situation with those who are watching. All right. So yeah, we had somebody. She called me and she said, "I I love what you do. I saw your show, and I want you to and I want to do a green kitchen." I was like, "Well, tell me about what do you want to do?" She said, "Well, I have an old kitchen. It's from like the 1990s." I said, "Uh huh." She said, "So I want to do it all green." Uh huh. And she said. And I want recycled countertops. I want recycled floors. I want recycled um, uh, cabinetry. And I'm going to find reclaimed sinks. And I said, great. And she goes, so are you interested in doing it? And I said, I just did it for you. And she said, what are you talking about? I said, if for you to take every single thing out of your house and recycle it, you know, I said, you want recycled? You got it. There's nothing <laughs> green about you taking every single thing out of your house, giving it to your neighbor who then thinks they're recycling, and then taking something from someone else's house because there's not a, you know, you know, while you think it's reclaimed and you feel good about yourself, you've actually gone the wrong way. You've done the opposite thing here, and people don't get that. It's just, if you got it, keep it. Right. Take care of what you have. Take care of what you have. Conserve it. You know, use it. Polish it up and, and let it stay. So if I'm, if I'm taking care of what I have, Right. Right. I'm green. I'm conservative. Or um, is that sustainable? I, you know what I mean? So a lot of people are already doing the work right. of helping the environment by not going and buying a new kitchen. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I mean, I mean, the whole idea, they have these like recycled countertops. But, you know, when you look at the recycled content in there, it's like that small and it's all resin and it's off gassing and there are chemicals in there. I mean, it's better, look, we all have to live. You know, we need a home to live in. And it's, if people stop building them, I wouldn't be in business anymore. So I, but use what you have and conserve what you have. And don't be, take that, that thing that I have to replace everything I have, you know, to make something with a, a, green, a green sticker on it. Now, there is one thing, though, that I think is, is uh, uber important as far as upgrading. And here's where I would suggest taking something out. And that's heating and air conditioning and ventilation systems in a house. Hmm. Um, most of them are just a mess. I mean, people don't see what's in there. You ever look at your uh, air conditioning duct and you go up there and you see this little black sticky stuff up on the, you know, you can kind of yep. wipe it, right? I mean, almost everyone's got it on there. That's the air that's coming out of those things. You're breathing it. You don't see it. You don't realize it. You know, your, your staff comes in and they clean off everything. You never notice what's in the air and you're sucking all of this, you know, who knows what in your air all the time because those ducts get so dirty over the years. And a lot of times what's happening is there's a hole in a duct too, and these things are like vacuums, so right? You've got something in your attic, and if you ever go in your attic, it's not the healthiest place. And it's like actually sucking all this stuff up there. So if you're wondering what all that stuff is, it's the things that's coming out of your attic. So an inexpensive, simple thing to do is you can add a filtration system. Um, with a local contractor, you can put like a HEPA filter right there at the, um, at the ducts and just get a full checkup on your system. You can also get a um, upgraded, more energy efficient one, which makes that to me make sense. Wow, I mean, there's so much. I mean, someone at home would just go, man, I could just listen to this guy talk forever. My wife doesn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is something that you, you share with me about LED lights, uh -huh. how people are rushing out and from what I remember, and I'm setting this up because we're going to take a break, but then when we come back, I want you to kind of share this information with people because it was mind-blowing to me. So we'll take that break and we'll, we'll, be right, we'll be right back. Sober Recovery offers a solution. Millions of people are losing the battle of addiction. Over 20 million Americans are addicted to alcohol and drugs. Sober Recovery meets you where you are. Call Soba. You're watching The Robert Ferguson Show on the Impact Network. Stay tuned for updates, tips, and tricks for living your best life. Before the break, I attempted to bring up what you share with me, so I'm not even going to go there. You, you tell us right. about these lights. Okay, well, LED lights are good. I'm not saying that they're bad, and, and they're... Uh, they're an evolutionary step in using less energy, but they're not the ultimate place that we need to stop. And I think people believe now that we've hit the holy grail. We haven't. My question is, what happens from here to here, right? If you can see that, how much power do I use here and how much do I use here? I know here I'm using my eight watts, right? 
but by the time it goes from that cord, what happened between here and the wall? And I think that there might be a little bit more of this power. So while I, again, I think these are really great units and I think it's a good thing, I think that this isn't the end all. I mean, when I feel that much weight on a fixture, it's only supposed to be using a, a, a few watts of light and it says 99 cents a year. I just think that we should better question, you know, these things. So, so what you're saying is that the, the light, right? Where, I mean, so where you get light right. between the energy coming from the power or whatever uh -huh. to getting to the light. Right. So the light may be Efficient. all that, right. but we're using a ton of energy before the light. I mean, look, I, right? I don't know how much energy, but if I got a heat sink and I got, I mean, that's a massive heat sink. Like so I basically said, we didn't solve the problem. I don't think we fully solved it. I mean, I think we... We, we sold know, more products. We sold more products. <laughs> God bless China. You know, they've been doing pretty well. And everyone starts popping these in their ceilings thinking that, that they're doing the right green thing. But this thing's heating up. I mean, that's significant. I mean, if, if anybody at home opens up their, you know, computer, I can tell you a computer doesn't even have a heat sink like that. I mean, so, so something, someone's not telling me the whole story. Okay, so the answer wouldn't be, or the solution is not solely in just getting an LED light. It's getting a more efficient light. Um, you know, if I look at this one, by the way, here again are the heat sinks, right? Right. You know, it's not just decorative. It's like, oh, that's kind of cool ribs. Isn't that nice? No, they're there to release the heat. Um, and so it's about getting the most efficient, you know, use of these things. So do we buy LED lights? I believe, you know, they're good, yeah. And here, this goes back to conservatism. You know, if I use less, I'm safer. Right, so whether it's LED or not. Right. You know, it's like, here, here's what happens. You have somebody who just has like a 60-watt bulb, you know, an incandescent. I grew up with it. I'm fine. You know, I did my homework. I did everything. I'm good. One bulb in the middle of the room. And people take them out nowadays, and they think they're doing the right thing. And they've got these that they're claiming 14 watts. Maybe it's more, maybe it's not. And they got 10 in the room, so they got 140 watts going in the room. And they think they did the right thing, and they actually let them run longer, too. And what they don't realize is that using less is, is one of the healthiest things that you could possibly do. Okay, so being a, a becoming a minimal... Minimalist. Right. Yes. That would be, like, giving back to the environment. That's really giving back to the... Or it's actually, you know what can I say? It's not taking from the environment because that's the best thing that we need to do is just stop taking from the earth and just learn to be one and live with it instead of against it. Well, I mean, wouldn't it be great if you had a series or something where people could just go with you on a journey and learn so then they can apply it and use in, the, in their own life? That would be great. I mean, <laughs> that would be really, really great. I'd love that. Oh, I think that's something that we're working on. All right. But it would be great because there's so many things that people don't know about. There's so many things that people don't talk about. There's so many things that people don't understand. And those of us who are out there, you know, I, for whatever reason, I'm a contractor, but I think I just more articulate than the other contractors. And they aren't talking about it. So I've spent a lifetime learning about these things, and I just I want to be able to share some of these things because, you know, we're only on this earth one time, I believe. I hope more. But, and I just want to be able to share some of these things with people so their lives can be a little bit better while they're here. Right, which which would be great. And yeah. being someone who's hired contractors, who's remodeled a kitchen, who's gone through all the, because I mean that's not my skill set. Right. So I don't really know. All I know is what I want the outside to look like. Right. But spending time with you, becoming educated on all these things that we just don't know. Um, one of my big problems, I guess, is why aren't the contractors telling me? Like after spending time with you or watching your series, many people would be frustrated because they're wondering, why didn't the contractor educate me on that? Why would he? What does he get out of it? What does he benefit? It's a nice thing to do. But yeah, not everybody's nice in this world. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. If we were nice things, we wouldn't be all be at war and stealing from each other. So um, no, I, I agree. And that's why I want to be able to do it for people. But um, you know, I, people don't think about it. I mean, look, the honest truth is, too, I think some of the chemicals that we're surrounded by, I mean, most of the, you know, with all respect to a lot of the subcontractors you work with, it, it seems like maybe they got a little too much lead or something had happened, you know. They're all, it, it's a very dangerous profession, and you're around a lot of chemicals that are unsafe. So you may not walk out of there unscathed, 
just having the ability to go home and want to tell people what you learned. It's like, right. You know, it's like the here's an example. You know, how about the miners? You know, did they get out of there and tell go in on the radio and tell everybody, hey, that was really dirty down there. <laughs> I think I'm getting sick. You know, they don't. They just they go home. They don't understand it. So, um, it's about education. You know, I believe that unfortunately our evolution has really stopped as a society and yet we're not aware of it and we think somehow that we've actually achieved more we think that we're so far superior to um any other life form on this earth and we're actually going backwards without even really understanding we think just because you've got an iphone and an app and i can tap on something and i can lay in bed and turn on my air conditioner on and off that you know we became invalids is what's happening mm -hmm. and that what's happened is ego has driven or basically stopped us from um, evolving because we're more concerned about what our house looked like. Right. We're more concerned about what we feel like. We're concerned about what the image we give to somebody is going to be. You know, what's inside? Uh, who cares? I, I don't care. Who cares? I don't care. You know, nobody cares anymore. And and here's an example. Like when you look at the way just animals. I mean, we think, right, we, hey, we're superior. We're humans. We can draw straight lines. They can. We use tools, and they can too. But and animals have been figuring out uh, life forms, how to build the least expensive, simplest, fastest, safest, and uh, warmest or coldest, you know, climate controlled homes. And they far surpassed us because they didn't have ego. They didn't care what the other monkey said about his home, you know? Right. The little, the, be the dung beetle, he don't care. He doesn't care because they've been, Forever they've been trying to perfect it and, and increase it and make a better structure. I mean, give an animal, they can watch what they can do and how quickly they, you know, and go ahead and stick your hand in one of their dens, you know? It's pretty cool. There's no air conditioner running in the thing. It stays right. warm at night. I mean, they figured all these things out. And so while we think that we're somehow this, this amazing society and these brilliant people with our iPhones and our apps and our computers, we lost touch. Mm-hmm. And it shouldn't take two years to build a house. I mean, they're able to build their homes in about, you know, a number of hours. They can get up and move. Wow. Well, you know, it's, it's so fascinating just hearing you talk about that because as a nutritionist and in my field, I see people buying the bigger home, right. having all of the gadgets, and they're talking about how healthy they are based right. on the food that they're buying not knowing about the glue that was used in the carpet. Exactly. Or the, what, what's up in their attic. Exactly. <laughs> right? Or the VOCs that are going through them, or the, or the Wi-Fi and the, the Bluetooth that's cutting through their house. We're just, we're, you know, I think sadly in many ways we're, we've become an ignorant society. And we don't want to believe it, you know, and we're kept alive by having, you know, these drugs. But we have stopped. We have completely regressed from what we used to be. I agree. I see the same thing in the world of nutrition and the solution in that world, which is what you're saying, the solution in your world is education. Education, awareness, and just and an understanding of what is it that's causing it. And it's like once you make the connection, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a change. Mm, that's powerful. I mean, I'm so all in on that because if we don't do it for ourselves now and then educate our kids, what is it going to be like in 30 years? Well, I think 30 years will figure it out, but we'll all be too sick. It's like, you know, everyone thought lead was a cool thing. Put it in the tile, stick it in the paint, put it in your gas. Oh, man, that makes people kind of nuts, doesn't it? You know, it's best to stick things together. That didn't work out so well. You know, so I don't, let's try to. I, I, let's but then it's like, who to believe? You know what I mean? It's like, like, like we get that in hindsight. Right. But then with all this new stuff, like there's a new sugar additive that just came out. Well, is that going to be better than sucralose, or is it going to be better than aspartame? You know, at one point, aspartame was like the thing. How about no sugar? I mean, <laughs> how about natural sugar? You know, I, I, I think whatever you can go back, if you just default to going back to nature, you know, it's like, I mean, here's one of my simple things, and when I'm buying food, if it's got more than five ingredients, I'm not really interested in buying it. You know, it's, it's these chemicals and these conglomerations of these things created by corporations or, you know, Monsito and all these other ones that made some of this stuff. It's it's not good for you. I mean, right. at least that's what I believe. I don't know. I don't know everything. Um, but I came from a, a journey of always being sick, and I never understood why until I realized my house was making me sick as a kid. Wow. And I would just go there, and I'd sit there, and I'd like, you know, I'd be in a fetal position. I'd be wheezing, and, 
and my nose was draining and my ears and I couldn't see and I couldn't go to school. And I just kept going back in there. I'm like, I'm going to sit in my room. I'm going to get better, Mom. I never did until I finally left and I realized it was the house that made me sick. Man, so. that's probably shortening many lives right now and people have absolutely no idea. Yeah. But then when you look at some of the indigenous people or people I know like in the Delta who don't have much, you know, let's say they have five rooms in their whole house right. of 10, two of the rooms are dirt floors, like today. 2017 which is good but these people are living to be 105 110 they don't have asthma they're healthy but yet they live uh, out in nature right in the ghetto ghetto right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. it's, that's but beautiful. they don't have all this other stuff right yeah they don't because I you know we, we think like I said we're evolving and so we start taping up all this the seams on your house and you're using caulking and we're being you know Nowadays, like I can't even have a fireplace in California that's open anymore because now I have to have it completely sealed off because they don't want me to use the climatized air so it's actually to burn the... Your houses became so sealed up, you know, they're like these microclimates and, and what are you putting in there? I mean, OSB and all of these products and I mean, there's mercury in these things. There's all kinds of yummy stuff in your house and you're not aware and it's not, but you know, and again, it's not just houses, it's you go to work. It's your, how often do people spend outside anymore? It's, it's unfortunate. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. And then here's what happens. Guess what? You go outside and then you, oh my God. Okay. Whoa, that oak tree just killing me. I'm done, honey. I've got to go home. We have changed our bodies where we're not even, we've evolved to not even be in, in one with our environment anymore. And that's also sad because you know what, what allergies are is your body learn is your T cells forgetting how to understand what's good and what's bad anymore because we spend so much time indoors and that's why people get they're getting their allergies as well except now we're allergic to something that's a chemical right we think we're we're doing better there we go outside and all oh, that oak tree oh forget that no going back inside that structure again yeah it's good wow well let me tell you i would like to follow up again and again and again and have you back on and talk about any projects that you have. We've made your information available to people so they can learn more about you. But I just want to say thank you for all the work that you're doing. You're and welcome. I appreciate you taking time out of your extremely busy day to, to be here. Um, and I look forward to all the things that we're going to do as far as to positively impact people's lives. Thank you very much, Robert. And, and you know, it, it takes a great man to want to make a change. And I appreciate that. And I think when we first met, you know, you were, you were, had the mindset of it's time to speak the truth and make a change. And so not everybody's interested in that. So I, I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm very glad that we were able to do something together. Thank you, sir.